Welcome back to Nickelodeon's Comic Corner, the classic, class known classics. This is episode number 2728, double watch number 2722. Two Batman books for you. First up, we have Tetsu Comics. Now, last time I talked about this era, it was the Silver Age Omnibus, which apparently I, I couldn't find the picture for it last time. I thought it exists, apparently it disappeared, I'm not sure what happened to it. So, we're going to pick up where we left it last night. We're just discussing the comics from the Silver Age, or remaining issues, plus some stuff for Legend of Dark Knight. Okay, we're doing for the comics 283 to 327. I should point out 283 to 282 are the last issues to feature the Roy Raymond TV detective stories. Mostly put a lot of the time, he basically bows aliens, which is something for a TV detective. And the last story bows a god who he thinks is a god and turns out he's a fake given the fact he says, oh, wait for the 12th month. And it turns out that that did not happen from the time period he claimed he from now for about 400 years later. But that's pretty much where we're in stories. That's the previous tip. There's like nothing not really big about these stories per se. We want to see you in our Rory Raymond story in issue 500. But as for the main stories themselves, the first story, <clears throat> 283. Uh, basically, we have a guy who walks through walls. We deal with him for an issue. Oh, and by the way, is there debuts here? Oh, heck yes, there are debuts. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Who shows up in these issues? Well, you're about to find out. Well... Yeah, take me just a minute here. Okay, so... Oh, here we go. Now it's only moved. Yeah, a lot of basically the stuff in these issues just all want. There's some occasional aliens per se that Bem has to fight here. Oh, the Phantom is called Pole, and he appears with one issue. Now, the reason why Rory was dropped after issue 292 because he got briefly replaced by Aquaman. Yep, that's simply what happened with him. Now, issue uh, number 284, Batman goes negative for an issue, thanks to a one-shot villain. Though, so, able to basically return back and thank the fact that the negative we saw the whole issue wasn't he a robot. Yep. In issue number 285, Batman battles a caveman. Yep. By the way, somebody's room by the finger. 286 feature appearance by Batwoman take on a villain called Starman. Yeah, he's just an evil guy who appears as one issue. Yes, Starman. No, it's not Ted Knight. It's a different Starman. There we go. Yeah. The guy's feet by the end of the story. By the way, Batman was featured several times in these issues. This is not the only issue he's featured in. Then we have where 287, the Raven the Wasp. Yeah. And yeah, it's basically Batman and Robin Pine Aliens again. 288. It is finding some creatures from Toxic Waste. 289, appearance by Batmite, who just 
basically helps the characters by making a sword fly. Yeah, it's a very interesting thing with this one. Uh, number 280, 290, Batman has a robot. Takes on basically a guy who's known as Gadgets Galore. Balor. Yes. All about energy charge. It's not, it's okay, a story here. And then we have, ooh, looky here, it's Batman battling another alien. They're like, are we getting something interesting here? Have Batman going giant for an issue? Yes, and also Batman was here too. Arnold Drake wrote this issue. Yes, Arnold Drake, the guy who co-created the Doom Patrol. 293, Batman is abducted by aliens. Oh, by the way, 293 is also the first time Aquaman appears in the book. 294. Thank God, not a freaking alien. It's basically a guy who's uh, who gets deemed crazed to exposed ele elements. And by the end of the story, he's cured, fights his own subordinates, and the guy goes back being a lab assistant. He's also very rude with the introduction. He's like, get out of my way. 295. A card and Nicholas story bring alien bring creatures from paintings. Okay. Two ninety five. Man said the Planet Master. Yes. There is a villain named Planet Master. Is he an alien? No, he's not. He appears two more times after this. No, seriously, he appears twice. His next appearance will not be until get this. Ambush Bug Year None. Yes, that will be his next appearance. That will be in 2008. There's also Batman Winding Gurr. Which will be two years later. And the thing is, the guy made his debut in 1961. So he's not made a return for 43 years. Actually, like 47. Also the first appearance of Edmund Burke. The second Plant Master, who appeared a little bit more than the first one. Yeah, he actually returned after this. I kid you not, his next appearance not being until the outside number 21, which was released 20 years later. Then he popped up a couple more times after that, and that's most of it for him. Yeah, I have no idea why Mike Bird brought him the guy back for. And then we have Batman versus some dragon. Actually, sea monster. Okay, 298. This is a historical issue right here. This issue is the first appearance of the Matt Hagen Clayface. You think he wait a minute. Matt Hagen, the actor? Nope. That was made of Batman Animated Series. Yes, in case you're curious, the Matt Hagen Clayface in Batman Animated Series. That was simply put taking this character and just giving the 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 um the job basically that the original Clayface had, which was an actor, belonging to Basil Carlo. Matt Hagen was the first shape shifting clay face. Here he finds the basic of makes him a clay face via a, a pool he finds while scuba diving. He'll probably come more times after this in this book. His second parent gets his powers back, and third parents the, the pool area is basically bombed, though he kept some of the bottles that he used later on. But yeah, Trinity has debuted the second ever clay face. He became a recurring threat for Batman over the years. He and Papa Legend Dark now, get to that later. But Really good. I this is it's not really quite interesting the fact that this is now Clay Matt Hagen was not an actor in the original continuity. No. What he was was a scuba diver and archaeologist. Yep. Two ninety nine. Drawn by Jim Mooney. Batman Battles Aliens. Three hundred Okay, now this is a debut of another classic villain. The Polka Dot Man! Yep. I kid you not, yeah. The Polka Dot Man made his debut appearance here. You're thinking, wait a minute. The Polka Dot Man? Yeah, and by the way, his next appearance not being so like Batgirl Year One. He also had the first issue of Batman GCPD, the Out Avengers Specials, most recent appearance of them. You're thinking, wait a minute. What, what didn't this guy appear in The Suicide Squad by James Gunn? He did. We're going to have the comics as Dave Hearns. 
Oh, in case you're curious, though, was it some lab experiment his mother did to him? No, he made his own. He made his own gear. Three hundred one. It's science stuff. This one, at least, it's not a freaking alien. Okay, three hundred two. Get experience with Batwoman, and it's Batman. Uh, turn into a statue for an issue. Like, okay. In 303. Where he deals with criminals at nightclub. Okay. Get a little better here. 344 is a return to Clayface. He breaks out of jail and gets his powers back in. And he does return one more time after this. In 305, it's basically Batman versus Aliens. Arnold Drake wrote the issue. Oh, 306 is story is called The Wizard of a Thousand Menaces. Uh, Professor Arnold Hugo. Which, uh, the best way to describe this guy is that he's, I think he was apparently supposed to be, by appearance-wise, he's probably supposed to be Batman's version of Dr. Psycho from Wonder Woman. I believe it or not, his last appearance was in House of Mystery. Yes, seriously. It's like, he started as a Batman villain, and then for, oh, by the way, he gets experienced by Alfred Ace Bathound. And then he became a Martian Manor villain, for a reason I explain here. And then we have where, in 307, we have guest appearance by Batwoman and a guy known as Alpha. This is a robot, fears this issue. No aliens. I don't mind occasionally Batman counts an alien, but that was the problem with this period of time. Too many stories, Batman versus aliens. Yes, so Batman takes on the Flame Master in issue number 308. He's a one shot character by with the issues with my no finger Dick Spring. In issue 309, we have Batman with Vicky Vale guest star in the issue with, with Batwoman. Second time these two appeared together. It is mostly put just Batman taking on some gangsters at a theme park. Actually, Mardi Gras. Okay. Uh, 310, 310, basic return of Batmite. Basically creates his own version of a, a circus of crime for DC. Now, 311, mostly, is the first appearance of the Tom Blake Catman. Yep, another historical first here. Like, first, you have Clayface debuting in 298, and now here in 312, we had a debut of Catman. Who, some people have thought of him as a ripoff of, let's say, Craven Hunter. Kind of, yes, but he's more ripoff of Catwoman. And here's the weird thing about this guy. At one point in the later story, he makes Batwoman into Catwoman. Despite the fact there is a Catwoman. The writers forgot she existed for some reason. Don't know why, but they did. Jim Moody did the artwork for this one, Bill Finger in the artwork. Uh, 312 is the last of the trilogy appearances for Clayface for a while. Yeah, this is the issue where, where basically the, the pool is destroyed. Yep. And 313. Now this is interesting, using a bat robot to deal with gangsters. This one was a lot more interesting. Dave Wood wrote this issue. Yes. And then we have in 314. Batman basically dealing with, uh... A little bit gangster actors. Kind of, anyways. A killer actor. And then we have 315. Batman dealing with, like, a jungle man. Yep. 316. Oh, thank God. Another villain. Good, another villain. Dr. Double X. First time he's appeared since issue 261. Yeah, that was his most previous appearance in this book. And this will be his last appearance in the book because next time he appeared after this would not be until World's Finest 276. He also appeared in a few other books afterwards, but not a lot of that big of a character, per se. But yeah, thank God another villain, not aliens. 317. Oh, the secret bat cave. Okay, that was it. I like the whole idea of the flying bat cave. To me, he's usually going to ask this one. Not really, no. Does keep a chub in there? Not really just the portal bat cave for him, but I thought it was a really cool idea. 318. This is the, this is the goofy story where 
Catman kidnaps Batwoman first to become Catwoman. One of like two times that he does this. And also Catman apparently dies in the issue. And Catwoman keeps basically, uh, excuse me, Batwoman keeps the costume. And 319 debut of Doc No Face. The whole thing with No Face thing. It's like basically took him and False Face, another one shot character, and made the one from the 60s show. Oh, by the way, the guy's name is Dr. Paul Dent. You're thinking, wait a minute, is it related to, to Harvey Dent? Completely related. 320, now this is our group ball one, Batman Robin come uh, mummies. And all about basically radiation, but really cool. 321, it's Return of the Terrible Trio. And Batwoman's in the issue. Yeah, they, they basically it's the three rich guys who are bored who basically deal with this stuff. Yeah, this would be the first person to start appear since issue 253. They would not return again until... Like, after this one issue, they would not return again until... Batman 176. And after that, they didn't appear again until, like, the Dark Midnight series. They're, like, villains for him for some reason. Not sure why. Yep. But we still got a little more here. Don't worry about that. We have Batman Turn of the Genie in issue number 322. Yep. No joke. He turns to a genie. In 323. Batman follows a guy called the Zodiac Master. And he is... Now, does he return after this one issue? No, he's a one-shot character. Way 24. It's Ben versus a robot. Okay, at least I gotta praise the fact it's not a freaking alien. 325. The penultimate story feature Martian Manhunter. Yeah, this one features the return of Catman. First time since his apparent death. And Cat and Batwoman briefly comes Catwoman again. But it's one issue. And then the final issue in this book is. One last time, Batman did with aliens. Yeah. So, the exception of a few issues, there's not really a lot of noteworthy stuff here. You would think, like, why the heck would Demo- You could probably see why DC didn't bother to collect a lot of these stories because they're not that interesting. They're just okay. So, next up we have is Batman Monsters, which collected issues 71, 73, and Legend Dark Knight. Along with issues in the same series, 83, 84, and 89, 90. I'm also going to discuss some in between issues. Now, I'm going to skip over some. I'm not, I'm not going to discuss these following issues. Uh, I'm not going to discuss 76, 78, and 86 to 88. And I'm also discussing the last two annuals ever released in the series. Now, first off, we have a three part known as Wolf, an excellent three part by James Roberts or by John Weckens. Uh, most of it is Batman with a werewolf in his early years. Yep. It's a really good three-parter. Yeah. It's a good three-parter. And then, like... Before I get to the other stuff, let's talk about the in-between stuff before I get to the very next story covered here. Now, 73 and 74 is a two-part story called Engines. It just deals with trains for a couple issues. Written, drawn, and inked by Tom McKeever. Yep. And issue 79 begins a... It's a standalone issue. It's a Christmas issue. Yeah, that's most of what it is. It's about Mark Millar. Artwork by Steve Yawo. Which, okay, interesting. Now, issue 80, Idols. It is mostly put just Batman doing an imposter for an issue. Yep. Written by James Vance, art by D- Doug Brathwell. Yep. And it's a, it's a two-parter. And then issue 82. Oh, yeah. 80, okay, it's a three-parter. My mistake. Now, 83 is the part one of a two-parter known as Infected. It is mostly put just Batman deal with Infection Gotham City. Which you could say this could let... By the way, this two-part written by Warren Ellis. 
Yes, worn out with John McCrea on the artwork. It's bad when they with a small virus in Gotham City, which is interesting during its early years. Yep. And then we have issue 85, called Citadel, written by James Robinson, all by Tall Simmons. It's mostly put just Batman dealing with some goons. Like, okay. Now, 89. Oops. Ugh. Uh, 89 is a two-parter known as Clay. This features the first... Uh, this is a story where Batman takes on Matt Hagen post-crisis for the first time. Though at this point, it had been a decade since basically Matt Hagen appeared in prison. That, that, he, that, that he appeared in a comic book. That wasn't him appearing as part of a basically a partial being in the mud pack storyline. Pretty much this two-parter is kind of a partial retelling of how basically how Matt Hank came about. That's most of what exactly this two-parter served as. It's in my Alan Grant arc by Enrock Alkina. Really good two-parter. Oh, and those two are the last two issues published in the book. Uh... The book itself, I give a, I give a nine out of ten. You even disguise the match alone here. Now, ninety one and ninety three is what you part know as Freak Out, or Batman deals with a guy known as Doctor Freak, which is basically a guy who's a who's a drug lord. Yep, that's most to put exactly what this this three parter is. It's written by Garth and it's art by Will Sampson. Now, issue 94. This is a really cool issue. I love this issue. It is written, drawn, and ink by one guy, Michael G. Gerbert. Where it's mostly about him doing retellings of classic Batman stories and just retelling them. Like, the first chapter is retelling of a story from Tithy Comics 31, which I think this was the first appearance of... Uh, I think it was the Mad Monk. Uh, yeah. First appearance of Mad Monk. Uh, done this style Bob Kane. Part 2 is basically Dick Spring. Part 3 is Neil Adams. Part 4 is Vincent Guarneo. And the, the third one is a salute to Frank Miller. It's mostly put for Batman stories for even John Paul Valley, but really good sale on issue. Probably by far one of the best issues of the whole series. And then we have this really weird three-parter known as Dirty Trick. Starts with issue number... 95 wraps up with 97. Yeah, Batman and Captain Gordon deal with a magician for a few issues. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Then we have a a two-parter known as Steps. Which somehow, basically, uh, two faces evolve this story. It's written by Paul, uh, Paul Jenkins. The other work is somebody you might be surprised about. Because this guy is do, still doing work for DC today, doing the Batman White Knight comics. The guy's name is Sean Phillips. A guy, so a guy who also worked on with Scott Snyder, Witches, and Black Mirror. So yeah, this is one of his, I think this may have been his debut work at DC. Uh, no, it was actually helped by his starting one. Well, I think it's one of his early works, yes. Uh, but then we have issue 100. Which is a double size issue. Which focuses on Dick Grayson. The cover is done by Alex Ross. The issue is written by Daniel Neal, worked by Dave Taylor. It is mostly put a kind of a retelling of of Tent Comics number thirty eight, but not in a modern sense. But an excellent issue. Another really damn good issue. Another I think one of the really good issues. And then we have one oh one. We have a Batman, a guy called Batman Mac. It's a Batman in the future for an issue. It's written by John Wagner and Carlos Agriga. You're thinking, wait a minute. Those two names sound familiar. Those should because basically these are the guys who co-created Judge Dredd. So yes, they work on a Batman comic. It's mostly put just them doing take a Batman in a version of Judge Dredd continuity. Even though Batman has done Mid Judge before in a, in a few miniseries. But yeah, uh, those are the issues in a nutshell. But we're not done just yet. Nope. Before I close this video out, there are two more things to discuss here. 
and that's going to be the last two official annuals ever released of the series. Starting with issue no, annual number six. It's an Elseworld issue written by Alan Grant Barry. It's an arc by Vincent Guerrero. It is mostly put just uh, as a long story where it's set during like the Crusades. The main character is Kathy Kane, which is an Elsa version of the Batwoman character. And get this, her father is Robert Kane. I wonder if this guy is named after Bob Kane, one of the co-creators of Batman. Yeah, apparently he was Batman previously. But I found the issue really quite interesting. And apparently the Jester, probably version of the Joker, just happens to be but also Zoo Kyle and Victor's ass. Now, the last A that we released is is basically in number seven. The cover story that said in the cover is My Greatest Adventure, which is not an old sixties book. Uh, this book is written by James Robinson. Art by Stephen Yell and Russ Heath. Gary Gardini guns and artwork. Uh, really fun book. Uh, it's basically Batman team with a guy called Balloon Booster. They got some one shot characters. Who's Balloon Booster, you might ask? Why he's basically. Apparently, he says here he's the son of Scalp Hunter. Yep. A character from Western Comics. Yeah, his father, grandfather was Matt Savage. Another Western character. And apparently this guy got to deal with Enemy Ace. Yep. But yeah, really good issues. The annuals themselves. Uh, first annual is interesting. The, the seventh annual is awesome. Yep. <clears throat> but that's going to be pretty much a particular view. Uh, by the way, I give the issues themselves. I, I'm going to give 7173 a 9 out of 10. 74, 75, 8. 780, I give those two a 9. 81 to 82, I give that an 8. The, the three parter that came next, I give that a 9. Uh, the Clayface two parter. I give that a 10 because I love that storyline there. Uh, the only issues I give a 10 to is issue 96 and 100. Uh, I'm going to give 101 also 10 as well. 95, 97, I give those issues a 8.5. 94. Oh, yeah, 94 is one I give a 10. Uh, 91 and 93. This one, I give that uh, 8.5. What about 99? Uh, the R I give a 10, but the story I give a 9. Uh, but yeah, really good stuff here. Now, basically, there's, there's no trade for quite a while for a Legends Arc Knight, so when I talk about this series, it will be mostly put just individual issues. Because after that Monsters trade, there's like nothing else for Legends Arc Knight for quite a while. Yeah. Next one's not until Arrow of the Bat, which just came out later. Last trade they collected that wasn't Haunted Night was Snow. And that hasn't come to much later in the series. Mm hmm. And that was the last special uh, trade paper I can release. Excuse me, yes. So, let's do pretty much a particular view. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe to notifications, and do into this like button. See you all tomorrow for our review for Konosuba, and maybe I'll finally get a chance to do watch the miniseries tomorrow for a time to Okay? Thanks for you.